camp session. Uh, uh, just a few housekeeping notes before we uh, properly get started. The session is being recorded. Just please take note of that if you would uh, choose to unmute yourself at any point during the session. Um, captions are enabled for this session. Uh, you can enable captions by navigating to the bottom bar and clicking that little CC icon. Um, please hold your questions and comments for the discussion portions of the session. Um, we'll invite you to unmute yourself when the time is right. You can also uh, pop your questions and comments into the chat. And right now we welcome you to introduce yourselves in chat. You can uh, uh, state your name, uh, your institution, um, where you're joining us from, a uh, fun fact about yourself, or just something you're looking forward to over the course of the summer. Uh, welcome to Tune In, Music for Education and Copyright. I'm Spencer Kaler. I'm the Programs and Services Assistant here at eCampus Ontario, working in the Open Library Department. Uh, I am joined today by Sarah Suknanen, my colleague in the Open Library, who will be monitoring the chat for me. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with eCampus Ontario and the Open Library, I'll give you just a brief introduction to us. So what is eCampus Ontario? eCampus Ontario is a provincially funded nonprofit organization that leads a consortium of the province's publicly funded colleges, universities, and indigenous institutes to develop and test online learning tools to advance the use of education, technology, and digital learning environments. In essence, we support the development and delivery of quality online learning experiences across all of Ontario. We lead research, development, and sharing of exemplary practices in online and other forms of technology-enabled learning. We support member institutions in fostering innovation, collaboration, and excellence on behalf of Ontario students and faculty. And we contribute to the evolution of teaching and learning by responding to emerging tech and the development of state-of-the-art online courses and programs. Here in the Open Library, we are the home of open educational resources in Ontario. We provide educators and learners with access to more than 16, 1,600 sorry, free and openly licensed educational resources. Uh, we also provide access to tools to help facilitate the easy creation or adaptation of open educational resources. Uh, such as Pressbooks for creating ebooks and an H5P studio for creating interactive activities, which we provide at no cost to anyone currently affiliated with an eCampus Ontario member institution. Uh, to date, adoptions of open library resources by Ontario educators, such as our textbooks, have saved students $26 million in material costs. Now, to get into sort of the meat and potatoes of what we'll be discussing today. We'll talk about music in instruction. I've outlined a couple of learning goals that I hope you'll be taking away from this session. Our first learning goal is to get familiar with key platforms for generating music with AI. And our second learning goal is to spark inspiration for integrating AI generated music into your teaching. We'll go over the theoretical framework for music and pedagogy. We'll talk about AI tools for music composition and production. We'll skim over some copyright considerations. A uh, Q&A session will follow that. And then I'll kind of circle back to how you can keep in touch with the open library. So why music for instructions? Studies have found listening to music releases dopamine in the brain, making studying all the more rewarding for students who incorporate pedagogical songs into their study. Incorporating multi-sensory experiences into study ensures memory of material are stored in multiple regions of the brain that can later be accessed by multiple senses. Uh, Willis writes, just as it's easier to recall lyrics to a song than to memorize a poem, and easier to recall those lyrics when you hear the music, students can increase their memory by putting information into a familiar tune, rhyme, or song. There are some prominent examples of this in popular culture. Uh, advertisers use jingles as a means of teaching us about their products, such as the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup, or the world famous McDonald's ba da ba 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 I'm loving it campaign. I wish I could say that's the last time I'll be singing to you today, but uh, unfortunately for you, it's not. There's more to come. Other examples of music and pedagogy, uh, Sesame Street and Schoolhouse Rock, use musicals uh, or songs rather to teach uh, young people about all kinds of 
things like voting, chemistry, math, um, many, many lessons to be gleaned from these two examples. And speaking of Schoolhouse Rock, Calvert and Tart assessed university students recall of the preamble to the US Constitution based on their childhood exposure to Schoolhouse Rock. They found that adults who as children had been frequent viewers of Schoolhouse Rock uh, recalled 73% of the preamble words verbatim, whereas infrequent viewers recalled only 17% of those words. Um, so the reasons for this were uh, twofold. Uh, repetition may allow a listener to chunk the tune and words together as information is organized and represented in memory. Dual encoding in turn may assist later re retrieval efforts if chunks of words are packed with the repeating structural patterns of music. The structural pattern of music may also provide clues if particular words are forgotten. Uh, Calvert and Tart also advanced the hypothesis that songs provide an authentic rehearsal mechanism for thinking about words. Most of us have had the experience of getting a tune stuck in our head, i.e. Uh, earworm. As the tune replays in one's mind, the person automatically rehearses lyrics in an effortless manner. Uh, Smolinski wrote a song to teach students the parts of the cell and compared students whose learning was complemented by practicing the song versus students who learn the parts of the cell only by traditional means. And in post-assessment scores, it was demonstrated that students who sang the science music in chorus scored almost 10 points higher than the students who were not in chorus and did not sing the music. Uh, the majority of course students suggested that the song served as a learning or study tool and was helpful in terms of test taking, pronouncing terms, learning the cell parts, reducing study time, and making classroom learning easier. Staum used melodies to teach Russian words to English speaking undergraduates. And when comparing two learning conditions, students who learned words using melody achieved 34% accuracy on assessment of their learning, whereas students who learned words without melodies achieved only 23% accuracy. So can you think of any applications for music in your teaching? Um, this is a point where I invite everyone to uh, drop it in the chat, your thoughts, or if you like to unmute yourself, I'd be happy to hear whatever thoughts you have. I might actually. Uh, something I found very interesting as an exercise is to get uh, students to create their own little sounds uh, and share them in an open fashion uh, with uh, classmates. Uh, it really got them to to have something useful and concrete to to work through. Um, it was and and to redefine music based on what they were sharing. That's so great. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, that's an excellent example of uh, using music in your pedagogy. And there's definitely AI tools that we'll talk about later in this presentation that can uh, complement that. Um, does anyone else have? Any thoughts, any examples they'd like to bring to the group? Oh, I see we're getting a question about if there, this recording will be shared. Yes, it will be shared after the fact. Okay, well, um, anyone else? Hi, Spencer. Um, my name is Stephanie. And I, in the past, I've had students create podcasts about music. Um, and they learn about copyright uh, restrictions that way, too. So oh, great. it was fun. It, it's a lot of uh, a lot of technological learning, though, for them, I would say. Right. Yes. And I the AI tools we'll look at later in this presentation are very user friendly. So that can kind of um, lessen the learning curve for your students. Um, I see in the chat, Paul has shared that one of our first year chem profs uh, has the students sing the period periodic table to learn it. That's an excellent example. Um, it brings to mind even uh, an earlier, easier example of learning our ABCs by singing them. And Tranum has also shared that uh, music can make a great icebreaker activity, which I totally agree. It has a lot of potential to ease awkwardness and create connections between students. 
All right. I think we're good to continue with the presentation, but thank you everyone who unmuted and shared and everyone who shared in the chat. So I will share my screen once again. So let's look at some AI tools for music composition and production. So there are two methods we'll be looking at today for creating songs with AI. Um, I'll note here that originally this uh, session was advertised as covering Colab. I swapped in Musicfy instead because it's a much more user-friendly tool. So we'll look at Musicfy today for creating cover songs as well as creating original compositions with Suno. So here's how we can create cover songs with Musicfy. First of all, what is Musicfy? Musicfy is an AI tool that enables users to take audio tracks and replace their voices with AI vocalists, including many popular singers. Uh, the materials that are required for this method are a karaoke track of your chosen song, which you can find on YouTube and uh, use a YouTube downloader to acquire yourself. Uh, you'll need a microphone to record yourself singing, uh, a set and some sound editing software. I recommend Audacity. It's free, it's fairly user-friendly, and it's very good quality. You'll also need a Musicfy account to accomplish this, which you can get for free. So to demonstrate how we'll be accomplishing this today, I first have to go into a brief interlude about Emily Dickinson. Uh, did you know that Emily Dickinson wrote most of her poems in hymn meter, which alternates between eight syllable and six syllable lines? This means that most of Emily Dickinson's poems can be sung to the tune of most popular songs. Uh, an example of this I've seen invoked frequently is I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing, which is also known as the Coca-Cola song. And this can be applied to poem four, 79, because I could not stop for death. Uh, forgive me as I briefly sing to you, because I could not stop for death. Be kindly stop for me. Um, and so I thought for the purposes of this exercise, I would take the role of an English teacher encouraging my students to learn the words to because I could not stop for death by singing them along to be, uh, I'd like to teach the world to sing, also known as the Coca-Cola song. So I will show you how this can be accomplished. Uh, forgive me as I fumble around with my screen just briefly. So what I did first was I took uh, a karaoke track of I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing, just off of YouTube, and I sang along to it myself uh, using Emily Dickinson's lyrics, um, but the original tune of I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing. So I'll give you just a brief snippet of what that sounds like. I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage helped just bought ourselves an immortality. And that is the last time you will be hearing my singing voice for the duration of this presentation. Um, so following that, what I did was I went into Musicfy. I selected an artist to cover my vocal track. For the purposes of this exercise, I chose Frank Sinatra, because I thought our tones would match pretty well and it'd be a decent dupe. So select Frank Sinatra, then I went 
and I uploaded my own vocal track. Here you can remove instrumentals or reverb. I suggest uh, uploading a clean vocal track, no instrumentals, no reverb, because instrumentals and reverb tend to confuse the AI. So just a clean vocal track works best in my experience. Then you simply hit generate and wait for the AI to work its magic. All right, here we have it. So there's a little bit of dead air at the beginning just because this is where the instrumental would be starting. He kindly stopped for me. But here is our- The carriage held just but ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste and I had put away. My labor. All right. So that doesn't sound too bad. And then what we can do following that is we can port it back into Audacity and stitch it together with the karaoke track to create something like this. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held just but ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. So as you can hear, it's not a bad dupe for Frank Sinatra. It's not perfect by any means, but it sounds, I'll say it, a lot better than my voice. <laughs> so, what I suggest you can do with this tool is create sort of Weird Al style parodies where you take the lyrics of your students' favorite songs, rewrite them for um, pedagogical purposes about fractions or parts of the cell or uh, whatever you desire to teach. And then you can record yourself singing those lyrics and have the original artist or really any artist uh, cover your voice for you. But if you're more interested in creating original compositions, I will show you how you can do that with Suno. What is Suno? Suno is a par partner of Microsoft. It's an AI tool that allows users to create original songs with the lyrics of their choice in the style of their choice. Materials that are required for this method are simply a Suno account and an optional ChatGPT account for generating lyrics. We'll get into some tips and tricks for using Suno after I give you a brief tutorial. So, sorry, <laughs> my screen is currently blocked, but here we go. So what I did was I went into ChatGPT and I asked it, can you please generate me a song for teaching kids how to tie their shoes? I thought it's a pretty generic example um, uh, that I think we can all relate to. So I sent that off to ChatGPT and we'll see what it comes up with.
now because we have limited time today, we can't comb through and rewrite any lyrics or uh, do any kind of quality check, but from the experience, experiments I've done previously, ChatGPT, it's, it's pretty good at generating a, a generic enough lyric that it shouldn't be a problem. So take this lyric, we'll copy it, go over to Suno, and in the Create tab, you can choose here to create a custom song. So you input your lyric here, and then you can choose the style of your music you would prefer. Um, so let's say 1970s rock female voice. Mm. And then let's choose some instruments. So let's go with organ, flute, electric guitar. And there are lists you can find out there on the internet of uh, common prompts that this kind of AI prefers. And then we'll just enter a title. We'll call it how to tie a shoe and then click create. And it will immediately start generating us two songs that we can use. All right, already we have our song. So let's take a listen to these previews. All right, not bad, pretty catchy, right? Well, let's take a listen to our second option. Also pretty catchy. I'm pretty happy with both these songs. But you can also go back and um, with the same lyrics, refine your prompt if you're not happy with what you've been generated. So I'd actually like to take a minute here and see, would anyone like to um, take a crack at this? Uh, you could throw out a uh, uh, an application we can throw to ChatGPT to create a lyric, or you could uh, suggest a style you'd like to hear Suno attempt. Welcome to drop it in the chat, or um, possibly unmute yourselves if you're so inclined. Um, but yeah, any examples are welcome. I'll give you a few minutes. Uh, oh, we got a question. Can Suno do a rap style for the song? I haven't tried rap. I assume that it can. Um, let's, why not? Let's try it. Let's, let's see if Suno can rap. Okay. All right, let's try rap, male voice. Hmm.
break beat. Um, let's try that. And click create. Okay, let's see how it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come gather around. It's time to learn a skill that's cool and you'll soon discern how to tie your shoes nice and neat with a loop de loop and a not so sweet. Grab your laces left and right, cross them over, hold them tight through the hole, pull it through. Now you've learned just what to do. Take one lace and make a bunny ear. Hold it steady. Okay. Okay, that one sounds a little bit like Eminem, but I'm not mad at it. It did pretty well. Let's see what else it generated. It's time to learn a skill that's cool and you'll soon discern how to tie your shoes nice and neat with the loop de loop and a not so sweet. Grab your laces left and right, cross them both. Okay, that one's a little Beastie Boys. I actually really like that. Okay, let's see if I see if we got some more comments in the chat. Have you tried getting Suno generated lyrics? I have not tried Suno generated lyrics yet. Um, I assume it's probably on par with the quality of Chat GBT. Um, I have heard other songs uh, generated by Suno that were kind of on par. So, yeah, I I say uh, your mileage will vary, but I think it should be all right if you if you test it out yourself. Can you add a tempo? I've never tried to add a tempo before. To be honest, my my musical knowledge uh, stops at styles. I. Uh, I uh, don't know a lot about actual music theory, um, but if you drop a tempo in the chat, I'm glad to feed it to Suno. All right, does anyone else have any? Oh, we got a, a 130. I guess that's the tempo, so. 130 BPM. Let's try that. Let's say rap mill voice 130 BPM. Actually, you know what? Let's shake it up. Let's let's not do another male voice. That's it's not giving it enough of a challenge. Let's do female voice instead. Okay. All right, let's see what we've got. Okay, it's not too bad. I can't tell you if it's 130 BPM, but <laughs> you be the judge. We'll see what this next one sounds like. Uh -huh. Uh 
Come gather around, it's time to learn. A skill that's cool, you'll soon discern. How to tie your shoes nice and neat with a loop de loop and a not so sweet. Grab your laces left and right, cross them over, hold them tight. Through the hole, pull it through. Now you've learned just what to do. One lace, make a bunny ear. Hold it steady, don't you fear. Wrap the other lace around its back. Pull it through just like that. Grab your laces left and right. Cross them over, hold them tight. Through the hole, pull it through. Now you've learned just what to do. Okay. Pretty decent compositions. Um, yes, to Jim, they do sound like they have different BPMs. So sometimes mileage does vary when it comes to prompting Suno, and we'll get into that actually um, in just a minute, but um, can you also specify time signature like three, four time? Uh, I don't believe you can. I think Suno can only really do four, four, you know, typical pop music stuff. All right, does anyone else have, oh, they sound like they have Um, does anyone else have anything they'd like to try with uh, with Suno or any any styles, genres, anything they'd like to, any lyrics they'd like to generate with ChatGPT or do we all think we're good to move on? I'll give you all just a couple minutes to decide for yourselves. Can we try a non-English singer or song? Oh, that's an... I've never tried that. Um, K-pop, maybe. Um, okay. Sure, let's try and generate uh, a non-English lyric from ChatGPT and see how it does. Okay. Okay, please... Generate me a wrench song to teach kids how to tie their shoes. Okay, so, so far so good. ChatGBT has generated us a French lyric. Let's copy that over and we'll paste it here in Suno. Okay, let's choose a style. So let's go with Email voice, power ballad. In case you haven't guessed yet, I am trying to get Suno to generate a song in a Celine Dion style. So I'm going to say it's all coming back to me now. We'll see how it does with this. Okay. Let's create that. Okay, we'll see how it does. I've never heard Suno sing in French before, so this will be a new experience for all of us. Now sing, come back to me. Quand c'est fait, c'est lancé, c'est pas difficile Avec un petit lapin et un joli tour Tu vas voir c'est super, mais ça dure toujours Quand t'es le fait, à gauche et à droite Croise les miens, c'est le fort Dans le trou, passe le bout Tu verras, c'est tout C'est une oreille de la 
All right. It did way better than I thought it would. Let's hear the second version. All right, I think we have the answer to the question. Suno can, in fact, sing in languages other than English. All right, we'll have uh, another mini Q&A session at the end of the presentation, um, but um, for the sake of time, I do have to move on now to some, uh, some tips and tricks for using Suno. So tips and tricks. Uh, you can use square brackets to denote words you don't want the AI to sing, um, such as if you put in fade out in brackets, the music will just fade out. The, the AI will not sing that. Uh, you can also uh, use brackets to denote instrumental commands. Like you can add a solo. Uh, for one of the songs I previously generated, I added a flute solo, which was pretty fun. Um, and you can denote some dynamics using square brackets, such as uh, fortissimo for a more forceful performance and pianissimo for a little bit of a, a softer performance. This next one, um, your mileage may vary with. Uh, I have not successfully implemented the asterisk guess, but um, I've read online that they can occasionally be used to add sound effects, such as a school bell. Um, but in my experiments with Suno, I found that the AI would either ignore those words or it would sing them. Um, so I encourage you to try it, but it hasn't worked for me yet. Uh, important to note that Suno rejects artist names as style prompts, um, uh, likely because of a, a certain uh, uh, question of liability in terms of copyright. Uh, but song titles are welcome. So you can't prompt it with Fleetwood Mac, but will it will accept go your own way as a prompt. It also rejects lyrics that contain curse words or words that are otherwise violent and or offensive, uh, which is maybe kind of a relief for educators as it means your students cannot use any kind of derogatory language in the songs they generate. Um, and it's important to note that users of the free tier of Suno can generate 10 songs a day, um, which can be a maximum of four minutes each. Now we'll dive into a few copyright considerations for using such tools. Um, but first, quick disla disclaimer, um, this is not legal advice. Uh, we here at eCampus Ontario are not lawyers. This presentation has not been reviewed by a lawyer. These are merely findings from research about AI and copyright. Um, so thus far, AI developed resources have been determined to be ineligible for copyright protection by the US Copyright Office because they are not the product of human authorship. Um, uh, training tools on the output of artists without their consent is legal. For now, there are many decisions that have yet to be made in uh, copyright cases around training AI tools on the output of artists. So uh, important to keep your ear to the ground on how that develops. Um, as of just yesterday, Suno is subject to a $350 lawsuit from record labels on the grounds of copyright infringement. Um, but for now, AI training qualifies as fair use because AI tools are learning from copyrighted works for transformative purposes. They are not retaining or sharing these works. But important to keep all these considerations in mind when you are playing with these tools. So another question for the audience, do you see any potential applications for Music by and Suno in your teaching? Uh, welcome to unmute yourself or just drop it in the chat if you're so inclined.
Stephanie is hoping to have her students uh, write lyrics and create a song. I, I think that's a great idea. Um, yeah, I hope if you do do that, Stephanie, please uh, email the Open Library and let us know because I'm sure everyone on the team would love to know how this uh, how this pans out in a classroom setting. Wondering how to steer them away from ChatGPT though. That's that's a tough one. Yeah, I mean it's it's so easy for students to jump on the ChatGPT train. Um, that I don't have an answer for. That's a much more philosophical question. But I mean, fostering their creativity and I mean appeal to their pride as much as possible. Because how cool would it be if they could generate their own songs just from their own creativity? Also, you can tell them to use ChatGPT as a jumping off point as. A uh, little inspiration, but fine tune the fine tune the lyrics themselves, um, so that they're really doing the actual creativity. Spencer, I just I'm just gonna jump in and say that's great. I am definitely going to appeal to their pride. I hope they don't get sort of um, discouraged because the sample that you just showed us about tying laces in a power ballad song in French was so good. <laughs> um, I could see them saying, well, I can't do, <laughs> I can't compete. But yeah, I, I'm i going to still try it. I hope, I hope it'll work. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I anything to engage the students is great. I, I, I hope you do try it and I hope it works out well. Thanks. <laughs> All right, anyone else would like to jump in? Or if not, we can also take questions if anyone has any uh, lingering question marks on their mind. All right, I'm not seeing any anyone uh, ready to jump in. So um, I will go ahead and wrap up. So here's how you can keep in touch with the open library. Um, we have a number of upcoming summer OER camp events. So we have history and hallucinations, error rates and mitigation in AI coming up on July 16th at noon also. Um, we'll look at artificial intelligence that cites its work in perplexity and a history chatbot that enables learners to simulate a conversation with a historical figure, i.e. hello history. Um, given AI's potential for hallucinations, we'll explore the use of citations as a way to identify and mitigate risks of misinformation. We also have personal in personal learning with AI, student data and interaction coming up on August 22nd at 12 p.m. We will be exploring personal tutoring AI platforms and questions around student data and guardrails uh, from Contact Norris AI Tutor Pro, a free personal learning co companion, to other platforms like Tutor AI, we will explore questions of student safety and the ways to guide learners in their interactions with content and tutors. You can also find us in a number of places online. You can browse the Open Library collection at openlibrary.ecampusontario.ca. You can email any questions you have to the Open Library team at open at, open at ecampusontario.ca. We have a dedicated Slack channel for Ontario Open Learning uh, called the Ontario Open Library Network, uh, which is oolnslackcom We have uh, many more informative webinars that you can uh, view on our YouTube channel. And you can follow us on, on Twitter at OpenLibraryON. Um, that concludes today's 
tutorial and presentation. Thank you all so much uh, for joining us. Uh, I will stop sharing my screen just in case there are any uh, lingering questions.